Levant presents e-commerce talks, where industry experts share their insights about the ever-changing world of e-commerce. Today we'll be talking to Head of Global Enterprise and Business Development at Nosto, Mateus Bognar. Well, thank you guys for coming back. We are uh, with one of our friends, Mateus Bognar from I am. Nosto. Thank you for being with us today, uh, Mateus. But um, first, I, I will ask you what I ask most of our guests, if you can introduce yourself and give us a little background of how you end up being now Head of Global um, Markets in, in Nosto. Yeah, well, thanks again for the invitation and thanks for being able to take part. So my name is Mateus. I'm uh, Head of Enterprise Global and Business Development International for Nosto. Uh, Nosto is one of the leading personalization providers uh, from Finland, um, with right now over 3,000 retailers in over 100 countries. And well, how, how did I end up in here? So uh, I guess for the last couple of years, I've always been in the personalization industry, working for two other major players, uh, DAC uh, um, orientated and UK orientated. And I think with the experience and the network and also like the, yeah, the campaigns, what we have achieved with those retailers, that helped basically getting myself into this role and also stepping up now, looking after the whole enterprise approach for Nostal, which is very, uh, yeah, very oh, it has interesting. to be an excited new uh, Definitely, new world, right? definitely. It's like, um, it's so interesting that for the last couple of years, like the focus for the ecosystems were like Europe focused mm -hmm. and now it's global. And it's like very interesting to see how the different e-commerce markets are set up, how they're operated, what kind of players are out there, what kind of new technologies are you know getting developed yeah, right yeah. now. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of movement around uh, e-commerce and uh, anything related to omnichannel. And uh, yeah, it's very, very interesting. But it's, it's, I mean, it's very interesting what you guys are doing because you're, you're, I mean, it's this concept of, of the personalization of the experience for the customer and it obviously has to affect what would you say personalize something for a US customer versus a European customer is a completely different animal it is uh, but then again sometimes you do have similarities so for example like a fashion retail in the USA will have more or less similar challenges and problems let's say to a fashion retailer from Italy or Poland or Germany uh, but then you always have to look on an individual level because customer client is are different, you know, they, they serve a little bit different around. People in Germany may have a different anticipation on how to use, let's say, internet versus people in America. There it's more open, there it's more free. Uh, people don't really think about the consequences yeah. sharing their data anywhere, where, whereas like in Germany, everybody's quite paranoid with the GDPR. GDPR, and, yeah, uh, GDPR so yeah. it's, it's quite interesting <laughs> to see the different, you know, mentalities and also like... Uh, what people are trying to accomplish with with e-commerce. Now, I mean, a lot of the people that watch um, our, our our cast is um, they're, they're CTOs, people who are very well, yeah. I mean, very well trained in, in the tech in the tech world. But for the ones that they're not understanding very well, how you personalize uh, a, a customer journey? Like, it's right. not that you're. I mean, this is. This is an internal joke also, but uh, it's not that your phone is actually listening to you trying to uh, like learn more from you. No, but no. At same, but at the same time, it is somehow. Well, I mean, <laughs> so the thing is, we are, we're not the CIA. So yeah, that's okay, for good, sure. that's good um, to know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what we're doing is we have built a personalization platform, which um, the goal has or the goal is to empower retailers to do personalization more easier. And uh, when you look at Amazon, when you look at Netflix, when you look at Google, like for the last couple of years, there has been more and more personalization invested and ongoing. And this is what the users are more and more expe uh, expecting from retailers as well. But the thing is, you don't want to invest millions of you know, dollars in building yeah, something yourself something, right? and then you're not maintaining it. And it's not your core business. I mean, you know, it's, it's not as easy as a lot of people think that by building a recommendation, the topic personalization is done. So what we're doing is we have um, invested quite a lot into, an, uh, into our AI. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to connect different data silos together and actually make retailers use the data from customers they already have to do be uh, better personalization. Um, and the way how we do it is basically that our AI um, analyzes the behavioral data and the transactional data, puts it together, um, enriches segments and customer life cycles and gives those information back to every CTO or even CMO to say, look, your um, first buying customer life cycles uh, clients have a totally different interaction on the website versus returning customers or VIP customers. And a lot of times these kind of insights are not known and you're like experimenting around and you think like, 
in that area, that's where it should be focusing on. But when you really start looking at the correlations between products related to, uh, to each other or customer life cycles, or brand affinities, yeah. like somebody who loves Nike doesn't necessarily want to see Adidas products and like has a totally different spirit mm -hmm. about life and you know how they see themselves so, you know na navigating in an online shop that's what we're really trying to accomplish with the ai to really visualize this data and then use those segments and use those data on an automated way to do content personalization to do on-site recommendations to do a b testing to do category personalization and so on um yeah and that's actually quite successful i mean that's i mean as, as a marketer that's amazing you'll, you'll be saving me tons of time because one of the, the, the wrong concepts that people have right now is that, well, as a, as a, as a marketing team, as a CMO, as a, whatever involved in marketing, we'll have to try everything till, to, till you find what sticks, right? I mean, the thing is, personalization is not a magic button which mm -hmm. you activate and then you go on holidays and everything is going to run yeah. smoothly, I right? Made a million that would dollars, be amazing. Yeah. I mean, that would really be amazing. But the thing is, personalization is like zero. Mm -hmm. You have to constantly experiment. You have to constantly try things out. Um, and I wouldn't actually recommend like personalizing the whole web traffic 100%. You should be doing clever on segments where you see that there is possibilities of, you know, improvements where you have a high bounce rate, where you have a high uh, basket abandonment rate, where you see that people are, you know, still undecided on what they want to do. And the thing is that with the technology from us and also with the other retailers in the same industry, uh, what we all are trying to accomplish is that we want to empower the, the online marketing manager, the, the CTOs also to focus on their projects, but have it have, on the other hand, a very flexible and easy to use tool and partner who challenges you on the daily basis to say, does that really make sense what you're right now doing with your customer data and with your customer experiences? Or would it not be better to maybe have two customer experiences, Adidas versus Nike, and then you have a third one, which is neutral traffic. And without having to invest resources for the next coming sprints, but actually to be quite in a, uh, independent and to test and try a lot of things out with us. And then maybe to build it after in uh, in house with their own development once we know that it has proven. Actually, I, I was I was gonna go there because one of the things that we talk a lot about on the show is is um, externalizing your th this kind of services or trying to build your own your own team. Yeah, uh, it could be a CCF. Or if, if, if I'm a big company, I can just um, call you guys, call Nelson, and say I need help with personalizing these products or figure out how to sell this better. But if, if um, one of our CTOs are watching right now and it's a, it's a two people or three mm -hmm. people company, where he or she should start be looking, like, where, where they should start? With personalization With per in general. I mean, exactly. Like what, what kind of uh, human talent they should be, uh, should be looking for to join them? Mm, well, so again, personalization is a very big topic, like mm -hmm. zero. So there are different areas where, where you should be focusing on. I think as a general advice, what you should be doing is to implement as a very first step recommendations and to find a partner or a technology who is not just limited on one logic, but has a lot of logic behind it, like, uh, like fallback logics to say, okay, we detect based on the user behavior, this is a new customer, this is a returning customer, should we, for example, promote bestsellers or let's say stuff uh, like products on stock, stock. or on sale, uh, maybe products with a certain margin, maybe products really um, uh, connected to colors or size. And in terms of in terms of going forward, then once you have like more brand managers who really look after like uh, product categories or brands, that's when it starts making sense to also think about content personalization, to really start building custom experiences around, let's say Nike or Adidas, right? Mm -hmm. So that you have the people and the emotions in the actual uh, online journey of the customer and really connect them to a brand with user-generated content, with other impulses which help the customers to make the decision on do I want to buy this or not. And uh, there are really cool, fantastic companies out there. Um, and then in terms of the, um, the, the ideal candidates, I think people who are on one side really into marketing, but also a little bit data driven, mm -hmm. because you do have to look at the data of uh, one extent. You don't have to be a Google analytics pro, I would okay, say, right, but right. you know, as long as you have a good understanding on uh, what data consumption means and sense. you have the marketing spirit, then I think that's the right kind of, of candidates what you should be looking for, for personalization. I'm, I completely agree. And, and sometimes uh, marketing professionals, they forget that people will not buy if they don't trust your brand. 
So different exactly. personalization is something that yeah. it, it finds the right way to touch the emotional buttons of, of our customer and then trying to hook them up with our product. I think one of the biggest mistakes what we see is a lot of times, and this is not really department specific, this can come from marketing, this can come from, 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 um, from the techno, uh, t uh, tech teams, mm -hmm. is that you build a lot of things which you think is the right, the right approach but it's not necessarily what your customers are expecting and you're not using the data or which you already have on the site. And then you make decisions where you say, well, I wouldn't build it like this because I wouldn't use it. But then in reality, if you would look at the data, it actually tells a totally yeah, different story. I mean, you story. might not be your customer target, right? I mean, exactly, exactly. So this is something where we see a lot of mistakes getting done or happening. But, um, you know, if you compare e-commerce 10 years ago to today, there has been so many changes. It's, it's, it's amazing what's happening. This is also why I love being in this industry. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's challenging and interesting. <laughs> I can imagine. It's, <laughs> that would be crazy. Uh, before we go, I always um, try to ask our guests to recommend uh, something for the people who's watching right now. So, um, yeah. for example, I would love to ask you, I mean, you, you, you've been in most conferences that are in Europe. Yeah. So for our CTOs and people who uh, are in Europe right now, they're planning to come to Europe. What should be the, the, the three top conferences they should attend relating to e-commerce? So again, this is, I think, ecosystem specific. Mm -hmm. um, if we talk about the DACH area, then I, my, 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 I would say three top uh, threes, which I definitely would recommend, is the online marketing rock stars in Hamburg. Um, that's um, quite a fresh, unique approach. Uh, it's a lot of, a lot about networking, a lot about you know discussing business, but then actually not discussing business there, but really just making sure mm -hmm. the networking goes with a lot of partying. Uh, then the K5 in Berlin. That's more the elite group, I would say, more the when it really comes down to business and networking, but it's a, a little bit more stricter, I would say, and it's really about the actual topics what you're trying to fix. Okay. And then the, the Mexico, because the Mexico, you know, it's been there on the market for years it's the dinosaur it's everybody who's looking up to it you have to be there it's a tradition even if you don't want to be it is the tradition <laughs> and uh, uh, definitely the Mexico which is not just that focus but also international focus and then you know you have other events like in Spain and in, in, in the UK so it really depends on um, what markets uh, market to focus on but definitely the Mexico I would say for Europe mm -hmm. and then if you look at the um, the DAH focus as an example uh, Omar and uh, K5 Great, sure. cool, cool, cool. But then there are many other fantastic events as well. And, and they're all with new It would be a very long list to go yeah, through yeah, every no, single absolutely, one. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, Mateusz, thank you so much for coming to and sit down with us for a bit. Um, yeah, no worries. I hope we can have you again. And thank you, everyone, for watching. Thanks, mate. Thanks.